Let's take a look at some Fusion 360 rendering tips to help us create compelling renderings efficiently. Some designers will fall into a rendering trap where they will click the render button, wait for the results, make further adjustments, and click the rendering button again. This process repeats itself. Unfortunately, it consumes a large amount of time as well as cloud credits and doesn't always result in the best final rendering. On the other hand, great designers and rendering pros use an organized process to achieve a compelling final rendering. We can think of this process as a recipe that starts with creating a compelling camera view, saving that view, setting a background environment, adding materials, adjusting the lighting, and ensuring a proper image size, and then only clicking the render button when this process is complete. To create a well-composed rendering, we start in our scene settings by adjusting the camera focal length to achieve a dramatic, but not too dramatic, camera angle. We then use the pivot, zoom, and pan to find the perfect view. Once we have achieved our desired camera view, we can right-click on Named Views and create a new named view, then double-click and give it a name. This will allow us to come back to our named view easily. Next in our scene settings, we can pick an environment. We can set the background as our environment. We can even open a custom HDR or EXR background. We can adjust the brightness of that image. We can adjust its position and rotate it into place. We can flatten the ground. We can adjust the focal length. We can also set a center of focus, which will blur the surrounding area. Pros paint with light and color. They think of their rendering as a framed composition, much like a photograph or painting. To work like a painter, we will turn on our in-canvas renderer. This will give us a real-time visualization of each of our material choices. This will also give us a visualization of our advanced material edits. We will also use our in-canvas renderer to add light to our scene. We will assign emissive material to 3D objects. These will then glow and cast additional light to the scene. We will move these objects up and out of the view. This will make them invisible to our camera view, but their glow will still be noticeable in the scene. Finally, in the render settings, we will take a look at the image size and render quality. Both the image size pixels and the render quality, standard versus final, have a great impact on render time. For example, this rendering was set to final render quality with an image size of over 3000 by 1800 pixels. The render time took 33 minutes plus queue time and consumed 6 cloud credits. This rendering was also set to final render quality, but the image size was reduced to one-third. The time dropped dramatically to only 4 minutes plus queue time and only consumed one cloud credit. For this rendering, the image size was retained and the render quality was set to standard. The time was only 2 minutes plus queue time and consumed zero cloud credits. With all six steps of the rendering process complete, we can now click the render button and wait for the final results. By following this recipe, you can create engaging renderings for your designs efficiently.